God said death is good. The end. Don't give me the answer. Well, Paul said to die is, you know, it's beneficial for us to die. But no. God said death is not good. Actually, death is your, this is no pun intended, your mortal enemy. God never said death was good. And if you believe that Adam was walking around on dead bones, you're a fool. He doesn't understand something. In the Bible it says, God, the Lord God made the earth in six days. He never gave any time frame before. Adam was walking in a place where there was no death. <coughs> Here they were faced with a decision. Why would God allow that serpent to be in there? You might ask that question. Yeah, God, why are you allowing me to go through this test? Why don't you just take this from me? You ever prayed that? You're not alone. The Apostle Paul prayed the same prayer. He prayed to God three times to remove the thorn that was stuck in his flesh. Is that a physical thorn? He doesn't explain exactly what it is. He said it was a thorn. And it was a messenger of Satan to buffet him. To keep him humble. And he prayed three times. He said, Lord, he said, remove this from me. And the Lord responded. He said, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. You see, we wonder why God, why are, we, why are you allowing me to go through this? You might wonder, why would God allow Adam and Eve to be in this place? It was a test. To see whether or not their allegiance would be with the serpent or allegiance would be with God. Folks, you'll never know where your allegiance lies until you have to make a decision. You see, when we're all feeling good, we're all in church together, it's easy to be a believer. Amen? Amen. It's easy to be a Christian. And here, you look around, and we're singing songs, and we're leading the praise, and the praise band's doing all this, and up here, and, oh, that's great. Everybody's clapping their hands, everybody's raising their hands. It's so easy in here. But what about when you're not around other believers, or that you know of? What about when you're out in the world, at work, at school, on summer break, whatever it is, you're alone at nighttime on the computer or watching the television. You're going to be faced with decisions. Where you, will your allegiance be with God on those decisions or will they be with the serpent? You see, this is the decision they have to make. You might wonder why are we in this world like it is today? Here's the decision that was made. They were faced, would they decide to obey God or would they be a God to themselves? That's the need to talk about absolute truths today because there is an absolute truth out there. There is a right and there is a wrong. Yeah. We don't like to talk about it. We think it's controversial and we want to make sure that we might want to make everybody feel good. Well, I don't, want to, I don't want to hurt your feelings. and I don't want to tell you that this is sin and this is wrong. Well, you see, in that issue, we talk about this on Wednesday nights. And we talk about unity at all costs. There are churches that believe in unity at all costs. They're not allowed to bring up any kind of controversy whatsoever. I'm not asking you to bring trouble to the church. But there are times we have to make decisions. This is right. This is not right. We have to know what side to stand on. We have to know where to go and how to be and what to do. The Word of God tells us there is a right and there is a wrong. There is a way that seems right to a man. Yes. But in the end of it leads only to death. That's right. I've sat in different board meetings and things with people in religious board meetings <laughs> with men who sat right beside me. And talking about in unnatural, immoral relationships and said it seemed okay to him. And the word of God, the Spirit quickly me and said there's a way that seems right to a man that the end of the leads only to death. You see, it's not up to you and I what is right and what is wrong. That's right. Amen. We're faced with decisions today. We're told that your right is okay and my right is okay. I talked to a man one time and many others believe like the way he does. As long as I have a belief, I'm okay. Hmm. My next question to that person is this. What if my belief conflicts with yours? Then what do we do? Are we both right? Can two be right and have conflicting views? Is it possible? I've never found it to be. So someone has to decide. 
decide what's right and what's wrong. Who can it be? If you were here tonight and watched the video of evolution versus God, that Ray Comfort asked that question. And in talking to professors, they responded when he asked that question. They, he said, well, who, who decides what's right and wrong? Who makes the laws? They said, well, we do. Friends, you see today what happens whenever we make our own rights and wrongs. When we make and become a God to ourselves, it only brings problems. I want to talk to you about a, this event that is unique in history. And the way it was brought forth and what was said is totally unique in history. And thus, it, I, I believe it's important for us to take heed. Turn with me to the book of Exodus chapter 19. The book of Exodus chapter 19, we're going to go to verse 16. A lot of you, if you have your bulletin, you'll see what we go to next. Then it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunderings and lightnings and a thick cloud on the mountain and the sound of the trumpet was very loud so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was completely in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. Its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace and the whole mountain quaked greatly. And when the blast of the trumpet sounded long and became louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. Then the Lord God came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mountain, and the Lord God called, the Lord called Moses to the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Now, folks, I don't know about you all, but if I was in the camp that day, there would be some trembling going on. I don't know on the mountain, but in my life, in my heart, I'd be, I'd be greatly quaking just like they were. <laughs> God, when He was speaking about to speak to the children of Israel to give them something they desperately needed, this is how He did it. And it's never recorded anywhere else that He spoke this way. Now, there were thunderings He spoke times and the lightnings and the trumpet, but not all in this way. This was a unique event in history. This is not just some pretty little Bible story. This is an event in history that's been written down that actually did happen. How is that? Well, God can do anything. Folks, if God can speak something into existence from nothing, in my belief and opinion, you can take this one as far as you want to take it. As my former pastor told me, said my opinion won't buy you a cup of coffee anywhere in this town, but I will give you my opinion. If God can speak something into existence from nothing, I believe that's the greatest miracle ever. There's no greater miracle recorded in the Bible. Oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait a minute. What about the resurrection? What about this? What about that? Folks, if God, if He can speak something into existence from nothing, and just say, thus said, Lord, boom, there was, then anything else is great. Amen. Well, how can you explain the virgin birth? How can you explain, folks, if He can take something and recreate it from nothing? Then the resurrection is no problem. The virgin birth is no problem. Any other miracle recorded is no problem. Amen. As a matter of fact, what's impossible with God? Right. Amen. Think about it, folks. He came down on this mountain. He spoke the way, the way he did with that loud trumpet. The smoke was covering the mountain. There was fire. There was lightning. There was earthquake. I don't know about you all, but it's got my attention. I've got somewhat of an imagination and I, I'm trying to imagine this event. And I believe this, that if he never spoke like this any other time in history, I believe, as the old word says, it behooves us. In other words, it's in our best interest to take heed to what he's about to say. Yeah. Yeah. Like Carmen said, when God speaks, everybody listens, even he, he, when he has that, he has that. Now, the question is this. Are we going to do our best to try to obey what he says. Not for salvation's sake, but because we love him. I got another question for you. Can you tell me the Ten Commandments? Do you know the Ten Commandments? Can you name five of them? Can you name three? Can you name one? 
think about it. How much have we disregarded the Ten Commandments because of the saying in the church today, we're under grace. Thus we exclude the learning and the teaching of the commandments. No, I'm not trying to bring you under some religion, but Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep me, or you will keep my commandments. Even John the Apostle said, in his writings to the church, he says, that if we love God, we will keep his commandments. And we disregard them. Well, we're under grace, we're under grace. Yes, we are under grace. It's different today in the sense that we're not trying to obey the commandments to enter into heaven. But if we love God, I believe we want to obey the commandments. And so I, I felt it important to you all that we read in Exodus chapter 20. Beginning at verse 1. And God spoke all these words saying, Now remember, before I read it, I want you to remember what's going on. The thundering, the lightning, the earthquake, the trumpet blast. It's all going on. He's speaking to them. And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children of the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, there we go, six days, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in it, and rested the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet 